802. Here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. We're going to catch up with Tim Shelton here in a second. I got to tell you, man, I, I am so excited about what this basketball team is going to try to achieve on Thursday night. I I cannot tell you when you're in a position like this to play for a national championship and you're in a position to have a chance to play for one of these things, it's special. And a guy who's part of the player development and everything that goes with watching the players get better and better. And really since that November 14th matchup with Arizona, where they lost 69-60. Tim Shelton, former Aztec player and director of player development. Coach, thanks so much for coming aboard. Appreciate it. Good morning. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate Tim, you. what makes this basketball team better than that first matchup against Arizona and why they're better today than they were back, say, last November? Um, I think one of the, the factors um, that sticks up most obvious uh, from the jump is probably – guy who got sixth man of the year in the conference, Dwayne Poli. Um, obviously, he didn't play at all in that first matchup against Arizona. And um, you guys are seeing what kind of player he's developed into, a lot more confident now, shooting the ball well, um, really causing mismatch, uh, matchup issues for, for teams that we play against. And um, he's one of the guys who definitely kind of raised the level of our team from a defensive standpoint and an offensive standpoint. I think he's one of the big factors in, in the game Thursday and a big factor. Um, and the reason why we've had that success. Tim, how good is this basketball team compared to that 2010-2011 team? Well, um, pretty close right now. They we, both made the Sweet 16 so far, and uh, the team has a has an opportunity, um, you know, to make that next step. Um, in comparison defensively, this team is off the charts, obviously. Um, offensively, I feel like maybe that 34-3 that team had a few more offensive weapons than guys who – Maybe had a little more experience playing together, so that you know that always plays a factor. But this team, um, probably the most hard I've, I've seen on any team, it's been a great team so far. Tim Shelton, player development for the Aztecs here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty Ten Ninety, also former Aztec player. Let me let me throw this at you too. With when it comes to de- seeing a development of a player like uh, Xavier Thames, why is he better now? Compared to when we say three months ago when he was struggling, or two months ago when he was struggling shooting the ball, what's changed his game? Um, X was one of those guys over the summer who who really got in the gym and really worked and got after it. Um, but when he sat down with the coaches, I think from a mentality standpoint, they just told him to, to be a beast and um, just go play the game of basketball. I think before he was taking on a role as a as a distributor and making sure everyone was happy and. He always knew that he was capable, um, but he really took his, his game to the next level over the summer and working at it and then just sitting down with the coaches and making sure uh, we were all on the same page and you know, letting him know that that's, that's the role we wanted him to take on. What's Steve Fisher's uh, greatest asset? Tim, one of the things that I love about the guy, for me, as an outsider looking in, you know, you could have a Fab Five team, and then you could take a look at how he's taken this team and molded it, and there's just so many different personalities I don't know if it's management or the personality or what, but his asset to you, what is that biggest ass attribute that he brings to a team? Oh, man, there are, there are so many. It's hard to, I guess, to pick one. Um, one of them is that, to me, one of them is that um, throughout the window of the losses, he always remains pretty even keel, and it's nice to have your leader always have a sense of calm about him, um, a sense of direction about him and knowing what to say. Um, he always seems to say the right thing and in terms of putting guys in positions to be successful. I mean, he's, he's been in the business for a long time. He's, he's still learning and he still likes to learn, which I really respect and appreciate about him as well. Um, and, and that's huge. I feel like no matter what's going on, what situation, you can always look to him. And there's never a sense of frustration or a sense of, uh, you know, wonder in what, in what to do or what to say. And there's always that, that figure you can look at and you, when you hear him talk, I mean, you guys have maybe seen the specials that they've had in the confidentials where you're hearing the things that he's saying to the guys in the locker room. You're like, man, it's it's almost scripted. It's so good. <laughs> Who's the most improved player to you after watching all these players develop? 
the one player for you that you're the proudest in the way he's developed into the player that he is today? Who is that guy? Man, uh, I was one of those good questions again. Everybody's gotten so much better, but, you know, me as a big man, and um, I'd probably say Skylar Spencer. I think Skylar's gotten so much better throughout the year, um, you know, obviously stepping into that starter role. And, um, you know, obviously he's a shot blocker, but there are so many things in terms of post defense and positioning and offensive awareness and becoming a better passer and a guy who makes better decisions off of ball screen rolls. Um, and, and as a leader as well, I think Skylar Spencer is one of those guys who really made a jump this year and um, he's so important to our team, although he might not put up the numbers sometimes, but I think in terms of impact, changing shots around the basket and, and just being a presence in there and making things happen, Skylar is definitely one of those guys. Tim, what I love what you're doing now, you're basically doing what John Gruden did, breaking down film, going and doing the meat and potato stuff that it takes to become a coach one day. Are you enjoying yourself having been a player uh, on what you're doing now? Uh, maybe want to be a head coach somewhere? Um, uh, how's this transition been for you? I know some guys it's tough. How are you going through it? I've been very fortunate, um, very blessed to to be able to start my career here at San Diego State. I know um, when the thought first came up and he wanted to get into coaching and understanding what type of positions would be opened up, I, I honestly maybe saw myself maybe at a JUCO or a G2 in AIA or something along the lines of that. Um, you know, using my connections at San Diego State and having a coach help me get there. But, uh, you know, fortunately I, I'm here at San Diego State, um, winning program, I'm familiar with the culture of the staff, so I'm very comfortable and happy and um, it's honestly been the best place and environment for me to learn, and I learned so much um, this year. Like you said, me and potatoes, and I'm getting fed. I'm getting fed every week, and it's exciting. And um, it's it's better when you win. You know, I'm learning that early that there could be a lot more stress on a program when maybe a coach, um, you know, or a job is on the line or something of that nature. But to be able to learn and, and learn from Dave Velasquez, who's really really helped me out a lot, who had the position before and has done a phenomenal job and as, as an assistant this year. Um, you know, him, Matt Sawyer, really just taking me under their wing. Um, showing me a lot, making sure they're correcting me on my errors and staying on top of me when I do mess up. Um, it's been it's been nice. I mean, I'm cutting film, and I'm going back again, cutting Arizona film, and realizing, man, I, I remember when I first, you know, cut the game when we were first going to play him, and I wasn't familiar with the plays and being able to recognize things as quickly. And now, um, at the end of the year, they're like, man, you you, you know, you're on top of it. It took you, it took you a minute, but you're really getting things together here. So it's, it's a good feeling. Tim Shelton, VP of Player Development for the Aztecs here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. You know, you have to be you, – you, you have an advantage, even over Coach Fisher and all the rest of the coaches, that for you as an ex-player to see where the program is going and where it's been. Tim, it's got to be pretty rewarding for you as an alum to be part of the building process of something that wasn't even there to what you're seeing now with a top-10 program. I mean, you, you, you've just got to be absolutely so proud of what you're doing and what you're seeing now with the Aztecs. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so proud to be an Aztec. And obviously San Diego is, a, is an amazing place in general. But, um, from you know, San Diego State basketball for my first recruiting trip and <clears throat> and meeting Mohamed Abakar and Brandon Heath and Lorenzo Wade and Richard Williams and those guys who um, were amazing, phenomenal basketball players. And, you know, you look back then when, when I first came on campus, I'm like, man, these guys are good enough to – to make whatever tournament they want to make. And we had our struggles, but we had talent. And then to see Coach continually grind and our coaching staff continually grind and bring in guys, and, um, guys who, whose personalities matched up. And they made sure everyone got along off the court as well because that was a vital part of us being successful on the court. And um, it's just grown and grown and grown, continually getting more wins and more wins to the 34-3 and team. And obviously to the teams before that who made the NIT and NIT Final Four, which generated some hype. Um, and now to see where we've been in, in terms of people calling things a, maybe a transition year or a bridge year to those years becoming years like this where we have continual success for the national scene and people are excited and still packed in the outside of the A house. And it, it's, it's been phenomenal. Darren Smith tells me you're a heck of a uh, musician, too. Uh, any truth to this? Uh, musician wise, I love music. Um, something that it's a hobby for me. You guys obviously you know about the rap video. and. <laughs> And things like that I got to do for the school, which was exciting. And I fun with the guys. Um, music is something that, you know, I love as, as a hobby. And, um, I haven't I haven't gotten to do any of this summer, I mean, uh, this year. Um, and I haven't wanted to because of the basketball thing. And, um, you know, I'm sure maybe, who knows, down the line here or there or something, maybe I'll put a song out or just maybe have something in my back pocket that I just listen to at home to enjoy. Um, 
but you know, music's something that is in my past, it's part of my life, and basketball is, is my future. So, hey man, I want to see a Super Bowl shuffle type deal if we make the Final Four out of you. <laughs> Just put something together for us here, so we can have like a Super Bowl shuffle stuff. We'll post it everywhere. With today's media world, that thing will go viral, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, maybe I'll have to do something after the season, but no distractions. We make the Final Four. I won't have any time to even do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, it's awesome, man. I appreciate it. What you guys are building is really remarkable to watch and really civic pride wrapped around that program right now. And everyone's looking forward to it on Thursday night against those Wildcats. Good luck to you, man. We'll catch you down the line. Thank you. I'm excited. Go Aztecs. And we're in our backyard in Anaheim. So. All Thank good. You, you got it, man. Tim Shelton, player development, former Aztec. Uh, Sweet 16. This basketball team, too, absolutely very special.